Andy Fields briefly went over the Kruskal Wallace test from the example in the textbook, but I also want to provide you another example that shows how to calculate an SPSS, how to interpret, and how to write up the results in APA style. You may know that the Kruskal Wallace test is also called a one way ANOVA on ranks. And so, because we haven't covered this content as well, I'm also going to address it in our ANOVA lesson to make sure that you can see the difference with this non parametric test compared to the ANOVA, which is a parametric test. So, the learning exam uh, objectives I have for you is to just be able to compute it in SPSS, interpret the output, calculate the effect size, and know how to report the results correctly in APA style. The one thing I want you to remember are the characteristics of the Kruskal Wallace test. You will typically have a dependent variable that is measured on a continuous and order or ordinal scale. But then your independent variable is frequently going to be three or more categorical independent groups. And they are all going to hopefully have the same shape or variability. And if they have a different shape, that could be a problem. So you have to just uh, kind of look at the distribution of the scores for each of the groups and explore your data and make sure your uh, assumptions for normality and for homogeneity of variance are met. But uh, what I want to talk to you a little bit about is this particular scenario. And it was that a researcher was interested in trying to prevent uh, a fear of clowns in children. So she designed an experiment in which different groups of children, 15 in each group, were exposed to different forms of positive information about clowns. So the first group of 15 kids watched an advertisement or some advertisements from McDonald's in which their mascot, Ron McDonald, was seen uh, cavorting about with children and going on about how they should love their moms. Then a second group of 15 children were read a story about a clown uh, who helped some children when they got lost in a forest. And then a third group of 15 children were actually entertained by a real clown who came into a classroom and made balloon animals for them. And then the final group of children, the last group of 15 children, were really the control condition. So they had nothing done to them. And the researcher administered a self-reported instrument that had them rank how much they liked children. And it was on a score from zero, not scared of clowns at all, to five, very scared of clowns. You can follow along with the data file um, in SPSS, and I'll show you how to conduct this Kruskal Wallace test and to interpret the uh, results for you. I am going to now um, show you a little bit about what I did um, and how I went about doing this. So in SPSS, this is the data file. You can go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Explore. Now the format of the information, which are the four conditions that the children could be assigned to, will go into your, your factor list. Your fear beliefs, which is the, the score of 0 to 5 that each child recorded for their fear belief in, in clowns, goes into your dependent list. I am going to just make sure I have descriptors on and click continue. For plots, I don't need a stem and leaf. If you'd like the histogram, you can, but you don't need it. You can do the normality plot and the untransformed Levine test and hit continue. The options, you don't need to mess with that. It just lets you exclude the cases list-wise, so hit continue and click OK. Now we have our output in SPSS. It basically just lets us explore the data, look at the normal PP plots, check out the test for normality and the tests for uh, variance, homogeneity of variance. So what I'm going to do is go back to the SPSS file where I hope that you can see things a little clearer. 
and we're going to talk a little bit about the normal QQ plots. So the first thing I want you to remember is that we had a fairly small sample size of 60. So it is worth looking at the tests of normality and homogeneity of variance for the sample size. Uh, these tests will let us know whether the distribution of the scores are normal uh, as using the Cole of Magorov, Smirnoff, and Shapiro Wilk test and the homogeneity of uh, homogeneous um, using the Leans test. So for normality, we are going to be looking for group differences. This means that we have to run the analysis for each group separately. So what you see on the screen are the group for the students who watched just the advertisements, for those who were read a story about the clown, for those who were exposed to a clown who made them balloon animals in the classroom, and for those that absolutely received nothing. And the normal QQ plots show just a little deviation from normality, just because a few dots deviate from the diagonal line, but it's really not enough to be very concerned uh, about the situation. So we're going to be okay and, and look at where... Um, which items we should actually be most worried about and, and seeing how that's similar. Uh, I'll pay attention particularly to story because that one dot is a little further off the diagonal line. I'll also make sure I'm paying attention to exposure and then of course none just because they're not right on the line. But let's take a look and you can kind of see how the Cullen McGurroff Smirnoff test will uh, help you kind of confirm what you learned with these normal QQ plots. So here is the Kilmagorov, Smirnoff, and Shapiro Wilkes tests. First thing I want you to look at is uh, that the Kilmagorov, Smirnoff test was not significant for the advertisements for the McDonald's group. And if you see that, it's the p-value of 0 0.200. And the group who was told stories about clowns who helped children had a p-value of 0 0.056. That's awful close to the p-value, but it's just slightly higher because remember, you can report it exactly. Others will round it up to 0 0.06. I like the exact p-value and just report it as 0 0.056. Uh, the thing I also want you to recall is that the data for the group that was entertained by real clowns was significantly different from normal. It had a p-value of 0 0.032 as were the data for those who were in the control group that had a p-value of 0 0.000. So keep that in mind when you think about normality. I also want you to now think about homogeneity of variance. And what you'll want to notice here is that we have a Levine's test that shows us the assumption of homogeneity of variance has actually been violated. We have a p-value of 0 0.015, the F um, statistic is 4.16, and because that p-value is uh, less than 0 0.05, uh, we know that the groups have heterogeneous variances. Now, let's uh, walk you through, though, how we're going to actually run this test, though, when we do the analysis. So I'm going to go back into SPSS. What I'm going to do is follow the general procedures outlined in Section 6.6. .6, and the first thing I'm doing is going to analyze non-parametric tests. And we have independent samples. We're going to keep our objective tabs the same. But what we're going to do in the field tab is make sure that we know um, that we've already assigned the predefined roles for the format of the information. So that's going to go into our groups um, dialog box. And then what we're going to do is make sure our variable fear beliefs is actually put into the test fields box. And then the next thing to do is just go to the settings tab and we're going to customize our test, and we just have to make sure we hit the Carrasco Wallace one way ANOVA, and then I like to do all pairwise. And then here, if you'd like to do this test, you can do the smallest to the largest, uh, following the information that Andy Fields provided you in the textbook. And so, um, basically, um, this junk 
trajectory uh, Trepstra trend test isn't very relevant to our particular scenario. Um, it's not going to show a trend in data because it's not like the same situation with soya where we had a declining amount of soya eaten and seeing if there was a trend in the sperm count. What we're basically looking at is if four different conditions have some effect on a child's fear. So if you don't want to run this test, don't bother. In this situation, it's irrelevant. Uh, I didn't include it, and you'll notice that in the Smart Alex answers, uh, Andy Fields did not include it. And so all you're going to do is hit run. And you're going to get all your data in the output area. And so what I'm going to do is just uh, jump right back to the PowerPoint because I've taken each component of the results and put them into this slide so I can give you some information. So this is your summary table and it tells us that the p-value of the test is 0 .001 and that gives us a little um, message of advice telling us that we need to reject our null hypothesis because that significance value is less than 0 0.05 which is that critical value we need to consider. What we're also going to do is check our independent samples uh, Kruskal-Wallis test and so by double clicking on your hypothesis test summary box you're actually going to open up this model view. Okay, and that is going to show us the same summary table from the left hand side, but we got more detailed output um, with our test statistic that is H for the Kruskal Wallace test. We have the associated degrees of freedom, and we have the significance value. And so the crucial thing to look at is your significance value, it is 0.001. And because this value is less than 0.05, uh, we could conclude that the type of information presented to the children about clowns significantly affected their fear ratings of children. We're not saying that it affected it either positively or negatively. We can just state that the, uh, the type of information significantly affected their fear rating. So what we can do is actually look at the box plots in our output right here. And that's going to give us an indication of the direction of the effect. So if you look here, you have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And 0 meant that they weren't scared of clowns at all. And 5 meant that they were very scared of clowns. So when I look at this data, I'm already noticing that story is a much lower fear belief as well as exposure. But that was not necessarily the case when you compare it to advert and when you compare it to none. Just keep this in the back of your mind because you don't want to write that up like that. But it does help you in interpreting information and kind of understanding the big picture of what you have. So what I'm now going to do is just let you know that you now know the direction of the effect, but to actually see the significant differences and where those lie, we have to look at the follow-up analysis. And in this case, we have to look at the pairwise companion uh, comparisons. So in SPSS, when you double-click this, you get this mod, uh, model viewer. And what you're going to have to do is actually uh, change it. So here, where it says independent samples test view, you have to scroll down to pairwise comparisons. And then you're going to be able to see the results that I have on the PowerPoint presentation and better understand the data. So here we're at the pairwise comparisons. Uh, the image uh, here is letting us look at um, the different tests that were done. So we know the test comparing the story in advert groups and then the test comparing the exposure in advert groups were actually significant. You can check that out because you see the yellow lines are here. You can also see it by the adjusted significance score. So your significance value of the comparison between exposure and adverts was 0 .004, and that is below the criterion value, that critical value of 
So therefore, we can conclude that hearing a story uh, and exposure to a clown significantly decrease their fear beliefs compared to just watching an advert. And so we know the direction of this effect just by looking at our box plots, but you can also tell, look at the test statistic, negative, negative, negative. And wait, oh, the two significant numbers, they're positive. So that needs to tell you something, that there is an adverse relationship going on here. And so what we do notice, though, is that there is no significant difference between hearing and exposure on the children's um, fear beliefs, and that none of the interventions significantly decrease the fear beliefs compared to the, the control uh, condition. That's just something to keep in mind. So the next step is, after we look at this data, we compute our effect size. We use that standard effect size score, r equals z, divided by the square root of n. So I've calculated it for each of the six um, tests. And what it tells me here is that for the first comparison of story versus exposure, we have a z-score of negative 0.305. And because this is based on comparing two groups, each containing 15 observations, we have 30 observations total. Our effect size is uh, negative 0, uh, 0 0.06, and that represents a very small effect. I mean, that just tells us the effect of a story relative to exposure was pretty similar. Um, the slide here shows you all of the other effect sizes. We're actually going to report all of these effect sizes in our write-up following APA style, so you're going to see it a little bit later in the presentation. Now you're asking me, what does this really mean? How do I write all this up? How do I explain that the stories and the exposure had um, lowered their level of fear belief, uh, but that the other interventions really were not as effective? So what we need to do is report the um, test statistic, which is don uh, designated as H. We've got to report its degrees of freedom and its uh, significance with the exact p-value. And then we're also going to uh, report all of the follow-up tests with the effect sizes. So let's take a look at what this is. The very first statement is going to come from that data that was in the, the summary table. Uh, for the um, model viewer, and we're just going to report that children's fear of beliefs about clowns was significantly affected by the format of information given to them. H, which is your test statistic. 3, which is your degrees of freedom, because you do four groups, minus 1, that gives you 3 for the degrees of freedom, equals 17.06, P equals 0.001. We know this because we looked at the summary table and we saw that we had to reject the null hypothesis. And so we're just reporting that result. We know that it was significantly affected by the format of the information. Now you have to go into detail about the six pairwise comparisons. And so you report that the pairwise comparisons with adjusted p-values, because you reported the adjusted p-value score, that's the exact score, showed that the fear beliefs were significantly lower after hearing a story compared to the adverts. And then um, an exposure compared to the adverts. And I get my test statistic, and I get my adjusted um, significance scores off of the table down in the, the corner, and that was from the uh, pairwise comparison table. And so I write all of that up. I also want to make sure I talk about um, that fear beliefs were not significantly different after stories, exposure, or adverts uh, relative to the control group. And then I need to tell them that the fear beliefs were not significantly different after stories uh, relative to exposure. And then you can see how each one of these is reported. I reported my significant uh, items first, and then I reported the um, non-significant items next. 
And then the last item that you have to report for each of the pairwise um, comparisons is the effect size. And so you'll see the effect size reported for each item. If you take a notice here, uh, you'll see that the H uh, statistic and the effect size are reported to two decimal places. Remember that R does not need a zero in front of it because that's the Pearson's product moment correlation and it can only go from one to negative one. So there's um, no uh, number exceeding one, so you don't need a zero. Remember that you report your p-value exactly uh, to two or three decimal places. And then you just have to make sure the most important thing is that you interpret that data. So it's very important to understand your significance values. It's important to understand the pairwise, compa uh, pairwise comparisons, what they're telling you, what relationships um, are you seeing emerge, and how can you write that information. If you have any questions or comments, contact me through Canvas Inbox or at kelsey.hall at usu.edu. I hope this helped you look at a different way of understanding this particular non-parametric uh, test.